welcome everyone to the SMART series on TRF Tuesdays. Um, my name is Alexandra Cook, and I'm a member of the SMART team, along with Liz Warner and Ann Westcott and Heather Finn. And so you're going to get to meet each one of us over the next um, six weeks. And um, we're really delighted to just give you a taste of um, SMART and tell you a little bit about what it is and hopefully get to answer some of your questions. Um, if you do want more information, um, there's a, a website, um, which will come up on my first slide, um, uh, that you can visit for more information. So I'm going to pull up um, just a few slides. Um, so what is SMART? SMART stands for Sensory Motor Arousal Regulation Treatment. And here's the website I was just telling you about, um, smartmovespartners.com. So let me tell you a little bit about how, start, how SMART started. Um, Liz and Ann and Heather and I all worked at the Trauma Center, um, which was an amazing organization founded by Bessel van der Kolk um, that embraced really high quality clinical work along with research and training in um, what kinds of methods we figured uh, worked for people. Um, and in the, that atmosphere of lifelong learning, we really wanted to figure out how to help traumatized kids. So we had been at the trauma center in general, we had been working on the issue of complex trauma and a diagnosis for children um, and Bessel had done a ton of work and we wrote a complex white paper through the SAMHSA um, grant um, on what developmental trauma looks like. And it has all of these different areas, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with since you're all trauma experts out there. Um, and so what we, when we were at the trauma center, we had these very dysregulated kids um, that we were seeing in these little tiny offices with a lot of traditional, um, uh, play therapy kinds of methods and some of the trauma informed methods. Um, and it was just really challenging. It was really challenging. So we wound up forming a relationship with Jane Kumar um, over at Occupational Therapy Associates. She is an occupational therapist who specializes in um, sensory integration, which is a subspecialty of occupational therapy. And so what she really highlighted for us was this developmental pyramid, this developmental hierarchy, where the bottom of the pyramid really rests on sensory processing, physiological regulation, and core motor functions. And that's where our traumatized kids get disrupted right from the get-go, right from the beginning. And um, most of our treatments, if you think about uh, a lot of trauma treatments, try and come in at these higher levels. They're coming in at the emotional level and the cognitive level, trying to develop mastery and planning. And so we thought, well, what if we did this more from the bottom up? What if we tried to develop a treatment um, that um, really focuses on the bottom three levels of this um, hierarchy? So, um, we put together a room. Um, it's the room on um, the left side of your screen. Um, and we put in a lot of gross motor um, kinds of activities. And, um, you know, you'll see in there, you see physio balls, you see there was a trampoline, there were a lot of crash pads, um, uh, little balls, mats, uh, things to balance on. And if you look at sort of a more traditional office on the other side, you can see the difference in how inviting it is um, that the smart room really um, invites a whole body kind of experience. And that's what we were looking for. Um, particularly one of the things that um, Jane highlighted for us, we're really focusing on the core body senses, which is proprioceptive input, vestibular input, and tactile input. So you see a lot of those kinds of um, activities um, available in the room. And then those are the kinds of things, the tools that we then developed that you're gonna be able to practice over the next um, six weeks, hopefully. Oops. 
Okay. Sorry, I skipped one. So initially what we did is we really focused, we were really focused on regulation, right? That was our initial question is um, how do we help regulate these kids? So how are we going to use some tools and some inputs and some cool equipment to help our kids get regulated? And we put a camera in the room and we watched a videotape, Anne and Liz and um, Jane Kumar and myself, we watched hours and hours of videotape. And then this interesting thing started happening is that we um, started seeing trauma material coming up. Um, so kids would get regulated and then you would see in their words or in their actions or in their postures um, or um, in their play, you would see um, evidence of their trauma histories and they were reworking it. Um, sometimes it was dysregulating to them. Sometimes they stayed very much um, in their window. So then we did this dance between regulation and trauma processing for a little bit. Um, but we, was, we started training um, um, on this model and then people kept asking us, but what about the caregivers? What about, where, you know, what do you do with the caregivers? Do you have the caregivers come in the room? Do you not? And um, that led to the third thread of this spiral that you see, which is the attachment building thread. And really there are two components to that thread. We focus on developing co-regulation skills um, so that caregivers can really help their kids get more regulated, um, which then helps regulate the caregivers as well, as well as improving um, the rhythms of engagement between child and caregiver. Um, so this really became the core of the model is focusing on these three threads. Um, but how do we do that? How do we focus on the three threads? Well, we use these three methods. Um, uh, we use regulation tools. Oops. We use um, somatic regulation tools, uh, some of which you're going to get to practice out over the next few weeks. Um, we use therapist skills. And this one might not be as obvious to you, but we use um, video reflection. So we started out taping these sessions so that we could see what was happening. Um, and we realized what an integral part of the method and the treatment videotaping was because this is basically largely a nonverbal treatment. And so when you try and put into words and describe what happened in a session, when you're um, usually not speaking, yeah, it makes it really hard. And it, it, there, you, there's a lot of choices about what you decide to put into words and not. So the video reflection itself um, has become a major part of the method. Um, and interestingly, when we do our trainings, we use a lot of videotape and um, every time I see a film, which I've now seen hundreds of times, something new, something different jumps out. So it's not, um, it's always new and exciting. So how do you decide what methods to use? Oops. You use a map. Um, and so we, uh, this is very similar to many maps or regulation maps um, where people look at um, being in your window of tolerance. Um, and so for us, that's the integrated state. And so on one side, you'll see how the level of arousal goes up into a traumatic state, a hyper aroused traumatic state or down into a hypo aroused traumatic state. Um, and where you're aiming for is to be in that green zone. And what happens when you're in that green zone, you'll notice on the other side of the screen is um, your social engagement. So when you're in your green zone, um, it's, you're connected. You feel connected to the other person in the room. And you can look, tell by eye contact, you can tell by all kinds of methods. You can tell by words. When you're out of um, the green zone, when you're in a traumatic state, either upper or lower, you're disconnected. Yeah, you're just... Uh, you're not in connection with the child. And then we discovered these sort of gray zones um, that we started calling the fluid zones. And this is actually where you're not quite sure the child might seem pretty hyper and looks like they're going out of their window, but you still have this feeling of connection. You feel like, all right, we're still there. We're still in this a little bit together. Um, they're just dancing on the edge. Um, and those have happened to be very um, productive uh, zones where we really, um, actually that's where a lot of the work actually gets done. So um, this map 
is going to be referred to over the course of the six weeks. And so um, we're going to do a little activity um, to sort of practice figuring out um, where you are on the map. And it seems pretty easy. And in fact, it is easy. We had a little three-year-old come into um, one of our uh, uh, new offices in, um, in Newton and three-year-old. And we have that map on the wall. And after sort of discussing, sorry, I'll show you. Uh, where his heebie-jeebies are up here. This was his heebie-jeebies. He could tell he was kind of right here. Um, so the point being that it's it's um, intuitive and, and works um, across an age range. So if you think about yourself right now, where would you put yourself at this moment? For me, I'm probably kind of in the fluid zone, um, hopefully still integrated and making sense, um, but a little bit uh, anxious presenting to people. Um, but let's see what happens as you read your body language and your energy level as we um, do this exercise. Um, so what I want you to do now is to close your eyes and focus your attention on your inner experience. You might take some deep breaths, pay attention to your thoughts. your emotions, your sensations, see what changes, do you feel your heartbeat? Now, where would you put yourself um, on the map? You can just notice for yourself. For me, that lowered my arousal level, for sure. Now I want you to open your eyes and really take in the external world. Now, I don't want you paying attention to your internal life. I want you really looking outside, uh, looking around the room, hearing what sounds do you hear? Any smells? Anything you didn't really notice before? Just now that you're paying attention, you see something pops out at you. And notice what that does to your arousal level. It's gonna be different for different people. For me, it felt like it just raised me just a little bit. I had calmed and now I'm sort of just kind of smack dab there in the middle. So also notice for yourself how these experiences were different. Um, did you like one better than the other? A lot of people feel much more comfortable or familiar either in their internal space or paying attention to the external world. Um, and if you want, you can write stuff in the chat um, if you're comfortable sharing that with people. Um, thank you, one person, yes. Um, said it was more calming to look around. Uh, I always find it so interesting if you did this with your um, group at work how um, the variety of responses, um, just such a range. Some you might've predicted, some you probably wouldn't have. Um, some people felt more active, activation when they looked outside. Another person felt much more comfortable going inside. It's just too busy and stimulating outside right now. Um, starting to think about things I need to do. And then yes, when you're looking around, yeah. It's hard to stop those thoughts from creeping in. Um, another person felt much calmer in their internal world um, and much more active in the external world. So it's a very simple exercise, but it really, um, it, it feels very powerful um, to me. And it's interesting to just start to pay attention because you're going to, over the next six weeks or so, um, 
you're going to um, be trying some different activities. And um, I want, and um, you'll want to pay attention to, um, oh, there we go. Um, what, how that affects your arousal level. Um, okay. So today we were just starting with kind of an introduction to SMART and getting a sense of the, um, using the map. Um, next week, you're going to hear from Heather Finn about how you use your muscles um, to regulate, uh, calling that proprioceptive input. Then after that, you'll hear from Ann Westcott about the power of touch and tactile input. And then after that, you'll hear about rock and roll, um, otherwise known as vestibular input from Liz Warner. Um, and then our, th those used to be our big three. Now we've got a big four. So finding the beat um, and rhythm is really um, a, a, a very important and powerful tool that we use. Um, and Ann Westcott's going to talk to you about that. And so giving you a sample of just some of the um, uh, the tools that we use, if you can think, think of that stool, remember one leg was regulation tools, one was therapist skills, and one was video reflection. So these are some of the tools that we use. Um, then we're going to apply them and um, use them in the last week. I'm going to come back and talk about um, the attachment building thread and co-regulation um, using some of these different things. And so um, lest you think this is just for children, I, I want to... Um, Say that that's maybe where we started out. We started out working with uh, latency age kids and um, teenagers, both in outpatient and residential settings. And now we've really expanded. Uh, we have a program starting up for um, actually pregnant moms um, and early infancy um, work. And then we're also going in the other direction, um, applying to transitional youth going into adulthood. And then also for adults, we started our adult work started at the at one of the trauma conferences where we had an exploratorium and so many of the um, participants and therapists came and tried our equipment and really had powerful experiences. And so then um, we started working with um, uh, using smart it with adults as well. And we've also done it in a variety of settings. Um, so hopefully that gives you just a little bit of a sense of what smart is and I would be happy now to um, answer any questions. Um, so one question came up around um, the overlap between SMART and other movement modalities like yoga. Um, and there's certainly a whole lot of um, movement approaches, right? And so they probably overlap in all kinds of ways. And really, um, I think this is just a frame. It's not like this is the answer. This is a frame that we're using. Um, so I could talk about yoga from a smart perspective, probably, you know, where uh, if you're, you're sitting and doing a lot of poses, certain poses are going to um, really use a lot of your muscles. So you're going to get a lot of proprioceptive input. Um, at times you'll probably be upside down um, or moving your head, um, which would be your vestibular input. Um, and then you also can get a lot of tactile input with, um, the, your feet on the ground, um, you know, just different ways that your body touches itself, um, in the process of, um, doing, um, so you get a very, you get very much of a core sense. I think it's another approach to getting, developing that core sense of being, um, that we're looking for, for our traumatized people. Um, can mothers use this with their children? Absolutely. Um, especially during a transition from divorce, there's so much, um, turmoil in divorce situations for both the parents and for the kids. So I think, um, I'll give you an example where I used it with my own son. This wasn't a divorce situation, but it was, he was trying to decide between schools and he was really upset and anxious about the whole process. And so we went downstairs and played ping pong for a while. Um, and in doing that, uh, it got him not thinking about it and it got him in a much more regulated state so that he could actually think. Whereas before that he was just overwhelmed, um, and really kind of nonverbal about the process. So, um, I think 
finding different ways to try and get yourself as the parent and your kids into a regulated state. And then you just see where it goes from there. We um, have been doing this in the school um, space. And I think on the website, I know that Heather Finn has done a lot of work has, and has did a presentation for South Africa around implementing smart in schools. Um, and so a lot of schools have some kind of sensory timeout room. Um, and um, so it, it can work very well in terms of when kids can proactively try and get themselves regulated or little tools when the school appreciates um, that it's not just trying to be distracting, but that like little fidget toys or things um, or bands like resistance bands, like under the desk can um, be providing input, which then um, keeps a kid a little bit more grounded and regulated in the, in the classroom. Do kids go into these rooms every session? Um, generally, yes. Um, when we first started, we had some kids that started in another room and then went into um, smart rooms and um at the trauma center, there was one smart room. So if you, if you missed your time, then you would have to go into another office, but um, which was also interesting in and of itself when you see what the difference is um, and what tools. We had one young man um, say, well, when do I get to really do therapy? <laughs> um, uh, because he thought he was just playing in the room um, and he wanted to just sit and talk by the time he became a teenager. Um, there are, I would refer you to our um, website for um, the source for a lot of the um, equipment that we use. We have um, uh, uh, different websites that we use. And uh, frankly, now, like on Amazon, you can find a lot of stuff, um, you know, in terms of like weighted blankets and, and um, uh, tools, the cushions, spinning boards, even. Um, You bet. Um, I'll ask you an obnoxious question. Um, I don't think there's um, continuing ed for the series. Um, they, I think we do have it for the training um, at the moment. Um, so, um, Oh, so another person is talking about adults having sensory issues. Um, yeah, they've had um, uh, one of our um, coworkers uses an aerial hammock, and it's just astonishing um, what a um, shift can happen when you um, allow yourself to stay in the aerial hammock um, as an adult. Uh, that's been one of the most powerful individual tools um, that we've found um, for adults. Yes. There's also, um, just so you know, there's, um, uh, we have a, a Facebook page, um, which where we started during quarantine last year, we started a smart at home series because we thought, oh my gosh, these poor parents are stuck at home with their kids and like, um, must be like losing their minds. Um, and so we tried to, um, capture things so that you didn't have to get like super fancy equipment. You could, um, you know, use your couch cushions and, um, uh, climb up doorways and, um, all different kinds of, you know, spinning chairs that you have at home. Um, oh, so glad to hear from the OT. Thank you. Um, yes. So, um, with pregnant women, we are, um, developing a model, um, in order to, um, help them. It's going to be a group model actually for high risk, um, um, folks, and it's actually hopefully training paraprofessionals so that it actually wouldn't even be clinicians. It would be people in the, um, in the community that would be able to do a very basic level of, um, um, helping, um, moms feel regulated, especially at risk moms who are really worried about all kinds of things prior to giving birth, but starting to both regulate and attachment build, um, are really the two main focus foci of um, um, our work with the pregnant um, and early infancy. Um, so, you know, for example, one of our members has worked with high-risk moms up in the Lawrence Lowell area of Massachusetts. And um, just, you know, just sitting on a yoga ball has been really powerful um, for them because they can get into rhythm with each other um, as well as sort of um, feeling uh, the rhythm 
themselves. Um, face, I think the Facebook page is around uh, is smart smart moves probably, um, and there's I'm also a link on. That. I'm having okay. trouble find. I'm looking for it because I want to give them a link, but I'm having trouble finding it. I know it's on the, our uh, website page at the bottom. Okay, I'll, I'll grab it. Um, and then there's a YouTube channel that also has some of the same videos, I believe. Um, well, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, it was very fun. And I will see you again um, in six weeks and or five weeks, probably, I guess that would be from now. Um, next week, um, you get to hear from Heather Finn, and she's going to focus on proprioceptive input. Um, and so... Um, I hope that that was helpful for you and um, uh, I'm really excited for this series. Thank you.